is in my heart So I'll sleep on the ground Cause I just can't figure it out I'm all alone with no friends But boy, I ain't been lonely I've been down to the river train car he said he too was lost just like us all well if we don't hop this train we will die and turn into dust hoping that our ghostly friends will guide our youth i said what do we do and he said here's what i got for you Well, hello, everybody. It's October, and I'm about to get to another playthrough. It's been just a little while, as all kinds of other things have been in front of um, me getting games to the table. Though I have plenty I want to share with you all, and I'm super excited about this one. I was going to play A Touch of Evil, but I saw a whole bunch of other people doing it. I said, you know, I, I do it every year. I, I may still be able to get to it before Halloween. We'll see. But I'm going to play at least this first scenario which you've probably seen a million of, so I should probably pay, play more of it, a Vagrant Song. Now, what is Vagrant Song? Well, it's a story about, that will unfold, it's a story about some vagrants with special abilities who end up on a ghostly train trying to save some spirits called haints uh, and bring back their humanity by, you know, punching them, whatever. I don't, I'm not sure how that works, but that's what, what you do. And they have a series of skills and abilities to do that. This would be, if I was to pick a genre for this, it would be a boss battler. That is what it is. You're, you're going to be playing on this same train, co ghostly train card, train car board the entire time. And there's going to be different setups for that board. In fact, um, I have this set up for the very first scenario called Shelter from the Storm. And in that, we are going to try and save uh, this haint uh, that is called, I believe, the, what are they called? The, um... Uh, what's their call? They're called something uh, turned faces as you can see they have these really cool acrylic minis I actually like these uh, That this is the these are the turned faces and you can see they're the same on both sides But the ghosts that we have the ghosts that we have to save in this one and bring back their humanity So I figured that was a good theme for Halloween as we're getting ready to approach the October month We're already into it by way long more than I wanted to be before I started filming this but I will at least get the majority of these episodes out. I don't know if I'm going to get to a touch of evil. I might do a post-Halloween version of that. Because I, one, one reason was I was playing it with my uh, some friends of mine, so I had it. I wasn't able to get it to the table. But I also have been doing a bunch of other things. And I hope you'll join me in that as well. Um, if I'll put a link down in the show notes, but I've been working on uh, filmmaking. I got an accreditation in AI filmmaking school <laughs> to do some uh, creative filmmaking uh, um, projects. I've worked on a couple of commercials, and I am doing a short film series called The Station, which is a horror sci-fi film series. And, you know, I want to take all the creativity that I have over the years and develop that into something that you might enjoy. But we're here to play Vagrant Song today, so let's get to it. I'm going to go over some brief rules information, and then we're going to get started. Not going to, there's a lot of videos in this, so I'm not going to spend a ton of time uh, going over the, the rules. But basically, we're going to start by taking our Vagrant's turn, then the haint's turn, next vagrant, next taint, next vagrant, next taint, etc., etc. And to do that, we're going to spend these things, these coins that allow us to take actions. Now, in some cases, we may get more coins because there is this wonderful bindle bag of cool stuff that we get to draw from that allows us to do things and also dictates what the haints do. The haints have a mood. They start off in this one, in this case, starts off in this wonderful mood, and then we'll flip to this when something happens. There are events that will take place in the game, and we also have some different things that we can accomplish. Now, I'm not flipping these over because the rewards are on the other side, but basically, to give you an example, strangers on a train as a team, if we remove two haint effects, and you'll see what those are, but basically, when a haint passes through us, they do think they haunt us and give us problems, and if we get those effects, we can remove them to complete this ritual. When that ritual is complete, we get the reward on the other side. There are three rituals. I might as well go over them now since I'm talking about them. The second, and it helps me explain the rules as well. The second one's first blood. After a vagrant suffers a room, a, a wound, a room, a, ru a wound. Remember by flipping 
over one of their skills and losing enough humanity complete this ritual. So as soon as somebody is wounded, meaning they flip their skill over from a uh, active side to a wounded side, you'll see how that works. These skills have this ability when they're wounded, they do that, but they have to lose all their humanity first to get wounded. And then the last one we have is the long stretch and lonely road. If the turn faces moves from train car A to C or C to A in a single turn, complete this ritual. I don't know, that one seems kind of tough. As you can see, we've got train car A, B, C here. Could be really rough to do that. Okay, so that's the that's some of the things that we get to do. Again, there are there are four sides to the board. The north side is the humanity side. We got the cycle side, the break side, and the round side. And it'll ref reference that as we go. There's a mystery slot and a seance slot that will come up later in different scenarios. And you can see I have some tokens on the board. I have a two here, six here. Those are events. When we go on those and investigate them, they will do something. Something will happen. We also have events on, for example, our break track. Now, what is a break? When we raise, get a haint all the way up to their humanity, in this case it's 10 because we're, I have three players, and we increase their humanity to 10, they're going to break. And in this case, they're going to go down this track. You can see the breaks can go up to six. We have three uh, breaks that we can do here, or one, two, and three. And then we're going to, if, when we do this one, we're going to check uh, entry seven, and that one check entry zero. So there's even some events that are going to happen from that. We also have one on round three of the round track. You also see that there are a number of obstacles on the board, and those are not something that we can pass through, but the haints can. They can they're ghosts, right? So that you can just go right through it. Now, if we ever suffer two wounds and we have to flip over our second wounded card, we become uh, we become um, westbound, and I'll show you what that looks like real quick. When we become westbound, we become a ghost, and we take a special westbound ability that covers up one of our skills. If we're not healed by the end of the scenario, we do get healed for the next scenario, but we lose one of our abilities, and that's not good. We permanently lose the one that was covered up by the, the westbound ability. Now, my goal is to not have us become westbound. This particular scenario shouldn't be that bad. Okay, uh, yeah, I think that's good. Now, let's uh, just talk about our characters. I'll go over them as we take their turns. I think that'd be easier. So why don't we do this? I'm going to read the scenario. There's a story here, um, and uh, we'll get right to the game. And remember, this is us dealing with ghosts, so it's very appropriate for the Halloween season. But it says... Hurton sends Hazelhurst. You're just one from a handful of train hoppers trying to find shelter from the storm. You don't recognize any familiar faces and come to think of it. You don't even remember seeing them hop on the train with you. But every one of them swears up and down that they just got here. And based on your own experience, you can't help but believe them. The strange thing is that everyone seems to be from a different part of town or towns. Places you've never even heard of. After a few handshakes and how-do-you-do's, you all try to settle in as best you can. Without the hay bale or old cushion calling your name, neither the train nor the situation brings much comfort. The only thing you ha all have in common, it seems, is the welcoming hand that helped each of you aboard. White glove, loose skin. Couldn't forget it if you tried. I can't tell if it's a good or bad thing that Mr. Welcoming Hand appears to be missing. Either way, hopefully things stay nice and peaceful on this leg of the journey. That sinking feeling in your gut is telling you otherwise. And so this is called Shelter from the Storm. We are playing a three-player game, which up here you can see two players, the, the Haint would have eight. Uh, we'd have to get to eight humanity. We're playing three, so we're gonna have 10. And then we have this special setup. It says place the token and train markers. Everything's placed out specifically. There's, there are no special rules uh, for this particular scenario. Uh, the terrain effects are there. We know we can't pass through them. The haint effects are the shakes. When we have the shakes, we lower our move value by one to remove the shakes, and we can discard an iron nail to get rid of it. Iron nails are things out of our bindle bag, which you'll see how that works as we play. And then spooked is the other one. If you end your turn in range two of the turned faces, and you're spooked, you lose two humanity. To remove the spook token, we need to, dis we need to uh, get rid of some salt. No big deal. When we break, there are no special rules. When the turn faces break, each, each vagrant may rummage one. That rummage means you get to go in the bindle bag and get a new item. We'll see that. And it says, remember, whenever they're reminding us things because this is the first scenario, remember whenever a haint breaks, the next turn a haint would take is skipped and all vagrants gain one humanity. The effect above is unique to the turn faces. That's the one where we get to do get into the bindle bag. 
if we, if for victory, we have to save the turned faces. Now remember, to save the turned faces, give them back all their human lost humanity until they have no more breaks. That means we're going to do it three times. Okay. Now, each of the uh, haints has this sheet here, this book, part of the book that tells them us what they do. On their turns, they're going to draw, and we're going to take actions based on this bindle bag. In the first part of the game, they're going to be lost. You can see it's lost. That has that that symbol there. And when there's there's something that's going to happen, and they're going to hit here and start to get, but not alone. So lost, but not alone, right? And you can see special. If the haint is adjacent to a break side edge, that's the far right. Uh, at the end of the turn, read event five. We're going to read that. I think that's the thing that also that flips their mood. And then cycle effect. There are no cycle effects for this mood. Cycle, uh, normally a cycle effect is when we cycle things to this track. I think there will be a cycle effect on the second part. We'll leave that for a surprise if you didn't read ahead. All right, so let's get going. We're going to start our turns. And um, we're going to start taking... Now, here's what you have to place all of your tokens first. So that is super important. And as soon as one player goes, the uh, haint is going to go. So lots of things can happen. We've got to be a little careful. I, I have watched some playthroughs of this, but I haven't played it, actually, amazingly, because this is a, right down my alley, so I'm shocked I haven't played it. But we're going to start here with the Songsmith, then we're going to go to the Runaway. And the, now, we don't have to do that. We can do that any order we want, so we'll see how that plays out. But we're going to start with the Songsmith. He's got some cool abilities. The, and the Revivalist is, is kind of a healer type. We'll see. Uh, we don't need him right now. And the Runaway is a little girl with her cool pup that has his own sets of special abilities. So, and we can move him separately as well by placing tokens on him. Uh, he's pretty neat. And he can do things like, like investigate and hit the haint. So we could go with her first, but I think we're going with the Songsmith. Now, uh, when we place a token down, we're going to basically pick our abilities. And here he is. So he's got a, a base ability called Upbeat Tempo. If you only have one coin on a skill, reduce the success of value of that skill by one. So for example, um, if we wanted to heal, we could place one here. If we only place one, that becomes a three, not a four. And for every coin you place on one of these, you reduce the roll requirement by one. Um, for for uh, rummaging, when we put a token on there, we're going to get to rummage one token out. We can have up to three. If we put two tokens, we'll rum rummage two, but we'll only get to keep one. The other one goes back in the bag. This is for just punching them, punching the haint. If we need two, it's a five. So if we put one on there because of a special ability, it'll go down to uh, four. So here's his story. The bright lights in the, of the big city have tugged on the songsmith's strings since childhood. He's dreaming of performing on those grand stages, pouring the music in the hearts to all for all to hear. He's got two special abilities. His first special ability is old an old metal melod, medley. Uh, you take you may take this action even if it was taken on your last turn. So one of the things you can't do is do you both your special abilities back to back. Like in the if I do a little rhythm, I won't be able to do it next turn. But this one you can. And says so for each success, target gains one humanity. So that is a range of zero to four, as you can see. It rolls two bones. That means we're going to roll two dice with a target of five. So if I place one token on there, for example, which I'm going to do, we're going to roll on that because he's within range. One, two, one, two three, right? We're going to get to already start increasing the humanity of the haint. So it's going to be a five, but if I put one on there, that's now four. If I put two on there, it's still a four. So see, this is one of the things that's I'd have to put more on there to do that. Um, after that, I think we are... Now we have to place all of our actions out first. I think we're going to do that. And a little rhythm it says target gains two humanity for each success. Uh, for each uh, success you have, his success is five. You may move that the target uh, one away from you. I'm not worried about doing that right now, though. This will become useful. I think for the last one, we'll pick uh, a move. Mm, I think we're going to rummage twice. That's probably the best thing to do. We'll rummage twice. So that's going to be our first. There's our actions, right? So we can take them in any order we want. So we're going to start with this one. We'll do that. We know we need fours. We're going to roll two bones based on that ability. I have the dice bowl out. We can just put the dice bowl right here. You can see that we got some nice bones, some dice to roll for the game. And we need to roll, because of, we put one skill token on there, we need to roll a four or better. So let's see if we can increase some of his humanity. Oh, we did not. That's a good start, Doug. This I'm starting off like I normally do, really badly. So we did not accomplish any of that. That's just dead. However, the good thing about rummaging is it's not a die roll, so we're not out of luck there. This bag's kind of tight. <laughs> but anyway, we're going to get two tokens out. We're going to keep one, and then we're going to get two, and I'll tell you what they do as they come out of the bag. So we're going to get a rabbit's foot. That acts as an extra coin. 
That's pretty cool. And we're going to get a candle. Candles are neat. They have this special thing where you place them down and the paint will move to the candle instead of to when it when it's uh, prioritizing uh, targets, which there's a whole priority thing in the game. Uh, it'll do that. But I think we're going to keep the rabbit's foot. He's going to keep the rabbit's foot. We'll put that right there and put that away. Now that is it for his turn. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go with the haint. The haint gets to go now. Now this is crazy because the haint is going to do a bunch of things and it's probably not going to be good for us, but let's go pull the bag out and see what he does. And again, as we pull things, I'll tell you what they do. So now, uh, no, okay, we got another candle. Okay, so uh, here's what happens with that. The, uh, that lonesome valley. Move towards the break side. Target Vagrant loses to humanity. Well, um, if he's moving toward the break side, I don't think there will be a target. Uh, I have to look that up, but I, I think it's the clearest, the newest or closest one. We're gonna, I'm going to look up targeting just to be sure. It says he moves three, uh, and he has a range of six, so he probably will be able to do lose have somebody lose to humanity. So I think that um, as it moves, it is going to make that attack, so I think that will be our Songsmith because he's the close, the nearest one, two, these are all a little farther away. So he will lose two um, humanity and go down to eight. Please let me know if I'm incorrect in that. Uh, this is a kind of a learning game for me, even though I understand how to play. So I will make some mistakes, and I hope that you will uh, keep me honest. So then the haint is going to move three. So one, two, three. You can see it's running away from us. Now, when the haint goes, or when we use one of these tokens, we're going to place it here. On the cycle track. So once we get to four, this is going to cycle. Now we know until he probably flips his mood or something different happens, the cycle track doesn't do anything. But that is the Songsmith's turns. We are done with him. We're going to leave his stuff there to, to identify that he has gone. And then we're going to get on with, I think, I think we're going to do the runaway. That would make some sense. Um, the Revivalists might go and heal. We'll see. Let's go to the Runaway. Now the Runaway has a special ability that says, Girl's Best Friend, you have the pup who cannot use rummage tokens or be haunted. Uh, but uh, she can do things. Uh, the little pup can do things. The best boy. Uh, he's got a movement of four. He can uh, punch for three plus and investigate for three plus. Accompanied by her loyal pup, the Runaway has fled home in search of a new adventure. She's eager to see the world, but it's definitely a little intimidating. Or it would be without her shaggy friend. She's got these abilities. She's got gumption. Your pup can perform this skill. For each success, target gains one humanity for each vagrant or pup uh, or pup adjacent to it. So he can heal. Um, H, um, H means hum humanity, I believe, and that's range one. Uh, we don't have the target is the dice there, and then we have you know how many tokens you put on, and then we need a four plus. And then he's got. She's got, uh, who's a good boy? And then it says, move the pup up to eight spaces towards you for each success. Any haint, and this is a success rolls too, that means one bone, uh, we can add for each token we put on it, coin token. Um, any haints or vagrants move through or gain one humanity. So we can use him to run around and gain humanity. And then that's, that's all she's got. But I think what we're going to do is we're going to move her. Let's put one there. Um, she can't. She has a personal movement of three. That's probably enough. It is, and then we're going to do. We're going to spend her other two tokens on investigating. Uh, she needs a three plus. I think that's the smart thing to do. There. We'll see. We need to see if we can get some. We're going to investigate that two. That number two token right there with her. So let's take her actions. We're going to move three. She's going to go one, two, three to here. To this second token and then she's going to get the roll dice she's going to get two dice she needs a three or better to see how many successes she gets there's a thing called exploding box cards if we roll a six we get to roll another die and add it to it and we can keep doing that forever she got two successes let's see what happens when we deal with number two here all right story time Woohoo! okay Looks like they left something behind. What kind of traveling tramp starts shredding, sh uh, shedding all their things? Investigate. We know how to do that. Whatever. Okay, if we get zero, we get that. But we got one because we got actually two successes. Not that two successes mattered in this case. Oh, well. This sure looks useful. Rummage two. That's fantastic. Only keep one of the tokens rummaged this way. But you may give the rummage the other rummage token you draw to any other vagrant after keeping a rummage token. Add events 8 and 9 to the bindle bag, then give the bindle a good shake, then remove event 2. When you rummage to draw two rummage tokens, this is a reminder because it's the first scenario, 
From the bindle, you rummage, your rummage value indicates how many rummage tokens you can hold. She can hold up to three, I believe, or two. She can hold two, but the big deal is there that she's only going to get one of these anyway. And we're going to put some tokens in the bag for events. Pretty cool. So the first one we're going to get, let me shake this up really good, is going to be a candle. I'm getting a lot of candles. You saw me shaking it up. Uh, we'll see what the other one is, and she can decide which one she wants to take. That's, uh, you know what? Something's going on here. I'm getting all candles. There's not that many in the bag. Maybe there's four. I don't know. I'm just going to give another th shake so we can see something different. I'm not trying to cheat. I will, in the future, not do that, but, you know, heck. Okay, salt. What does salt do? Well, let's let's look at that. Salt, uh, when a, when target, targeted by haint action, use salt to ignore the effects of the action. Now, we want to be affected and then remove that. So she's probably going to take the salt and she'll give the candle over to the revivalist. Now everybody's got a token to spend. But that is her turn. That was her entire turn. So we are done there. She's moved and she did her bindle bag search. So we're going to do uh, the thing with the haint again and see what the haint does. Uh, it is a rabbit's foot. Okay, so that is, goes back up. That goes right there. Rabbit's foot. And we're going to go and see what the rabbit foot does for the haint. Okay. Move towards the break side. Vagrant in range. Uh, vagrants in range move two towards the break side and lose two humanity. I don't think it's six. Oh, the only one, let's see. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so she's in range. One, two, and she loses two humanity. That puts her down to eight. And our songsmith goes one, two, and he is going to lose two humanity and go down to six already. Oh, you know what? I forgot to put the two things in the bindle bag. That could have been made a difference. What do I need to put in? Uh, number 8 and 9, I believe, if that's correct. Let me just double check. Into the bindle bag. Number 8 and 9, yes. I won't uh, redraw that. It's okay. Gotta mix it up. Give it a good shake there. Um, and then the haint is going to move 2. So he's going 1, 2. Now, he's on that 6. That doesn't matter. That's us, not him or them, so that was he's done, and I've shuffled these up enough, I think, I hope, I'm kind of really getting mixed up in here, so there's, this, this bag could be a little bigger on the top, that's the only thing wrong with it. Okay, next we're going to go to the Revivalist, now the Re Revivalist, I saved him for last because he is a healer, and I wondered if some of us would get hurt. So what are we going to do? Well, he's got Soothing Rhythm, uh, if you rolled any doubles for this action, you gain two humanity, then for each success, target gains one humanity. So he can too, it's going to be, um, uh, basically he's going to go after a, well this is for the haint, you can do that on the haint. One to two range with a target of that, a four, let's see, we want to heal, okay this is any, this is better, uh, copal incense for each success target gains one humanity and you move uh, the target one space. I like that. Um, let's do this, we're going to do uh, a move, he's going to move, and then for his other two actions we're going to put them both on here, that's going to give him two dice to roll um, for that action. Now we need fours, but uh, we're going to move him first, so let's go do that. His move is a three, he's going one, two, I think he's going to have to stay right there because we have to, we want to be adjacent to, I don't know, we don't have to be, it's a range one or two, so he's going to move here because he's going to plan to move that way. And then he's going to use his ability on the, um, his, his soothing ability on the Songsmith to heal some humanity. Let's see what we get here. Wow, a six and a five. That is awesome. We're going to explode that six. So right now we got two successes. We might be able to heal all or most of the Songsmith's humanity there. And another five. And that was almost a six. So we got three successes there. So three successes. It says for each, for each success, target gains one humanity, and you may move the target one space. Well, we're going to go up three. Boom, boom, boom. We're back up to nine. And we're going to go one, two, and three. It's one space each. There we go. Thank you, Revivalist. That was really amazing. <laughs> and then we have used all of the Revivalist abilities. Okay, we're about to complete a full round. All the players have gone, and now we just need to do the Haint's last turn here for this round. And then we're going to go to the next round. I thought the Haint would have moved more. Okay, we got Salt for the Haint. We'll put that on the Salt space. So we're not, we haven't had a cycle track thing happen yet. That's interesting. Okay, keep running. There, well, here we go. Vagrants in range um, lose two humanity. With uh, The range is four. Um, and uh, humanity move two towards the break side. Okay, so one, two, three, four. One, two, three. Nope, not in range. One, two, three. The she is. So she will lose two humanity. That puts her down to a six, but her little dog can come save her. 
and then he's going to go one, two. He's almost at the other side of the train already, our haint, our hainty haint. And then we have that all set up. So we are done. We have completed an entire round of the game, which means we're going to go boom right there and go to our next round, and we will reset all of their tokens. And we are good to go for the next round. You can see how this game plays out. Now remember, um, I'm going to leave those... The, uh, um, uh, we know that um, the Revivalist used his Copal Incense, so he cannot use it this round. Uh, we know that she didn't actually use either of her abilities, so she can. And the Songsmith's ability he used can be used over. It doesn't have a limit. So if we can get close enough, we might be able to... He's only got a movement of two, though. We might be able to hit the Haint again. Uh, right now, we did... Um, Wait, we, we were, oh, we didn't succeed. That's right. I was like, hey, we didn't get any health on that because he failed. Okay, so anyway, that's going to end that round. We're going to go to the next round. But I think just for the sake of brevity, we're going to do that in the next episode, which I will get out very quickly, I promise. So right now we have, we're chasing the uh, turned faces across the board, and then we're going to try and solve um, and, and heal them from all the bad stuff that's happening to them. So thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. I hope you will enjoy this episode of Vagrant Song and this series of Vagrant Song. We're going to at least complete the scenario. And if you like, please say something in the comments. I will continue to play this game. This game looks so fun to me. I've had it for a while and I just haven't played it. And I really, really want to. I want to play past the first scenario. I want to go to the camp phase and keep going and see how this plays out because I don't know. I've never seen anything past some samples of the first scenario. It will all be new to me and hopefully it will be new to you too. So again, thanks for watching and please do join me uh, in my other endeavors. I would really appreciate the support and the help. Like I don't ask for any money or anything here. I do this all for nothing. And I, I hope you all enjoy that. And I'm also doing the other thing for nothing. So the only thing I ask of people is to go and subscribe and comment and pay attention and talk to me and tell me what's going on. So that's it. And I want you to do that with my other channel. The channel is called The Greatness Forge. That's really not relevant to it. It's where I do all my experimentation, experimentation with videos and where I'm publishing part of this series. In the notes below, I will include a web, uh, the web link to my personal portfolio as well as that other site that you can come join me on. And talk to us there. Maybe you can even help me create some new stories. I, I'm about to wrap up the first season of The Station. It's going to be a total of eight episodes. They're, they run between three and eight minutes so far. This last one, episode seven. The reason I say there's eight episodes is there was one before the series started. Eight total episodes. Episode seven of this series will be the finale for the season. I'm going to then work on a couple of things and then come back to it and do the second season. So uh, please go and enjoy that. I hope you'll, you will. I think it's been a lot of fun creating it, and I've learned a lot. You can see my progress in my skill set as I went and then also took courses to improve my filmmaking capabilities. So anyway, thanks. Talk to you soon, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.